Are you ready for winter? If you're living in an RV or a van, you better start getting ready because it's right around the corner. I'm going into my eighth winter living full time in an RV, mostly off grid. So every year I get a little better at being cozy and warm inside my RV. So today what I wanna do is I wanna share with you three of my latest gadgets, accessories for staying comfortable and cozy inside my RV. You're gonna wanna watch this because this is updated for 2023, so there's some new stuff on here. And stay tuned till the end because I have a fourth bonus accessory, kinda just for fun, but you're really gonna like it. Hey friendlies, I'm Carolyn and welcome back to my life living in an RV. Like I said, this is going to be my my eighth winter living in an RV. So I want to share with you everything I have learned along the way. And do me a favor, if you've been around a while, you're watching my videos, you enjoy my content, but you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and click that subscribe button below. Be sure to hit the bell for notifications so you never miss a live stream or a new video. And even if you think you're subscribed, do me a favor, double check. YouTube constantly unsubscribes people. It's just not, it's not just me. It's called shadow unsubscribing or something like that. So anyway, let's get started. The first gadget or accessory that you're going to need for surviving the winter in your RV, whether you're boondocking or staying in RV parks, is the tried and true. I'm including it because it's inexpensive and it's one of the easiest and inexpensive ways to insulate your RV. I use Reflectix on my windows, underneath my curtains, just, you know, my curtains kind of kind of uh, disguise it a little bit. And I gotta tell you, it can make a huge difference. Your windows are single pane. They're letting a lot of warmth out, a lot of cold air in. So put it on your windshield, put it on your windows, and it'll help keep the inside of your RV warmer in the winter. So super easy, Reflectix. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, I have a shopping list of everything that I'm gonna be talking about in this video, in the video description below. So don't worry uh, if you don't know where to find it, Amazon link below for everything in this video. Number two, second on my list for living full-time in an RV during the winter is a backup power source solar generator battery like the Blue Eddy AC 180. I have tested a lot of different backup power sources over the years. I mean, years I have been testing different ones. And the Blue Eddy has by far outperformed all of the other ones that I have tested. So I'm very happy with my Blue Eddy AC 180 for just regular everyday full-time traveling use. It's it's compact, you, it's easy to store. And the nice thing about having a backup power source is if you do have to run your generator in the winter or you're plugged into an RV park, this one can charge to a full charge in about an hour. So if I'm turning on my generator to charge my battery in the morning, I can charge this in an hour and I can use it as a backup power source when the sun goes down because the days are shorter to keep my Starlink running because that uses a lot of power. So I got to tell you, I mean, I only installed 260 watts of solar on my roof, which isn't a lot. And rather than have all the expense of having to upgrade my inverter and converter and put more solar on, I also have the plug and play. And that really does help. But if you're getting a lot of rain and a lot of clouds, Anybody who has lived full-time in an RV knows that it's really hard to keep things running. So a backup power source like a solar generator that can charge on AC or solar power or your your, your uh, cigarette lighter charger is a must-have in the winter months. It's absolutely a must-have. And this is my favorite so far. So again, there's a link in the video description. And number three. This is something I just added last year after my friends Edie and Cindy let me borrow theirs. A compact plug-in space heater. This thing is a game changer, absolute game changer. Of course, you're not gonna be able to run it on your uh, RV battery. Anything that has heat takes a ton of power. You're not gonna be able to run it on your solar generator very long, but I can run it. 
like an hour, maybe two hours on the AC 180 that I have here. Of course, the bigger one that I have, I can run it a lot longer. But here is when it comes in handy. I spent the winter in New Mexico a couple years ago and I ended up in teams at night. I ended up in snow. It was a ch choice I made. I wanted to stay there. If you remember correctly, I was looking for property actually. And it was a choice I made. And what I had to do is when it got to multiple days where it wasn't getting any higher than 30 and the nights were in the teens, I had to go to an RV park and plug in. And that's where this really comes in handy because on some really cold winter days, winter weeks, you're just going to have to plug in. Bottom line, you just have to plug in. And this is just so much more efficient. It's tiny. Look at this. It's lightweight. And I put it in front of me while I'm working, while I'm watching TV. And it is just so much more efficient than the blow furnace that I have and if you're plugged in, why not use electricity instead of your propane? A, a portable space heater like this is a must have. And plugging into an RV park, if you have to, if it gets super cold, is also just something that you might have to do to keep your RV safe and to keep you safe as well. So that's number three, a portable space heater. So before we get to number four and my big surprise, if you like this video, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below. And without Without much further ado, I have the bonus for you. Something I just bought that I love, and it's gonna be great for the winter too. So let's check that out. I recently had a lot of stressful situations come up. You know, I traveled across country, I had family stuff, and I carry all of my stress in my neck and my shoulders. And I was like, you know what? I gotta do something. I can't afford to go out and get a massage every time I want a massage. So look what I bought. <laughs> This is a shiatsu neck massager. And the reason I think it's an awesome accessory for the winter is because it's heated. So you can plug it in to your regular AC outlet. And I think it also has a car. It did, it came with a car uh, adapter. So you can plug it into your cigarette lighter, <laughs> yes. And I gotta tell you, this thing is amazing. It's like a deep tissue massage for your neck. It's amazing. I love this. So I thought I would add this because it's something to pamper yourself. Don't forget to pamper yourself. Don't forget to do something nice for yourself. And it's heated. So, it, you know, you can get some nice heat on your neck, maybe when you're just laying in bed or something like that. So I can't even remember what the name of it is, but it's Shiatsu. Check it out. Look, at it's got these, uh, look at that. You got these arm things. So you, so you, so your arms weigh it down around your neck. It is amazing. I created a shopping list of everything I mentioned in this video, plus a few extra bonus things that I didn't mention in this video that I think you're really going to like. So check out the Amazon link below to go to the, the shopping list of all the winter RV accessories to stay warm and comfy and cozy inside your RV. And again, thank you all so much for being here. I appreciate you watching my videos all the way through and all the things that you do to keep this channel going. I really appreciate you. All right. And I think that's it. Yeah. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. Mwah. See you soon. What do you think? What do you think? We have something for Sadie, too, for the winter. So check out the playlist below. Are you a good girl? Are you a happy girl? Are you the best dog? Oh, and tomorrow night is her DNA results. So be sure to tune in tomorrow night for her DNA results <laughs> to find out what breed she is. Ten of them. All right, bye.